slashers and scream queens and welcome to the horror daddies podcast a podcast where we talk about horror movies <laughs> and the daddies end them and surprise we decided to actually make episodes for you guys nobody um, does it like us they, no, we can't no. give up no i decided to get myself a recorder because it's literally <laughs> like crack in my veins now that i need to record i cannot go without recording so i was like jonathan i'm just gonna spend the money we'll get a recorder and we'll do this through zoom because yeah. i just can't so we kind of just last minute decided we're gonna do the scream movies that we haven't talked about yet so two three and four so today we're talking about scream two hell yeah brother yeah uh, so <laughs> did we so did we okay Every episode for me feels like they merge together. We did a ranking, right? No, we haven't done a rank a ranking. We only talked. We talked about the first one, and then right before the fifth one came out. Okay, I think I think we did a one. ranking like on our, ourselves. Yeah, I think yeah, so. yeah, ourselves. Yeah, which kind, yeah. mine can be kind of harsh, or people, you know, I can get roasted for mine. But what is what it is, what it is. <laughs> yeah, I remember. So, do you have like a story for this one, or so with me? The Scream trilogy, as a trilogy, mm-hmm. the first trilogy, my mom had the VHSs. So okay. anytime I could, I would sneak them away or even I don't even think she even cared at some point. I would just take them to my room and just watch them all. The thing with me is that eventually, as I got a little older, there are certain ones in that trilogy that I like more than others. Gotcha. Uh, so I would rewatch you know, other ones. I don't want to spoil anything. Other ones more than I would watch some other ones. And then some other ones, I would watch them just for certain scenes. Yeah. Um, like this one. Uh, I will admit this one is not my favorite. This one didn't resonate with me as much as one and three did as a child. I guess because you three had so much stupid action. That's just really bad. <laughs> but, <laughs> but and I, I do agree though. This movie I wasn't the I enjoyed it. This watching, no, it was best. a fun watch. Yeah. Okay. Can I let me let me clarify something? I will admit that the Scream franchise is probably the best horror franchise there is out there. True. Most All profitable. the movies. The, all the movies are fucking bomb. They're mm-hmm. great. The thing is, is you, as you watch them, everyone has their preferences of which one they like to watch more than others. And that is the thing. They're all great movies. I can watch all of them, but there are some that I'd rather watch before I watch other ones. But I can do a whole marathon any day. Like we did yesterday. We did one and two because my nieces and nephews haven't seen them. So since we decided to do this, we're just going to watch all of them all together. And we watched the first one last night and we watched this one today for this yeah, uh, which is like, a lot of uh, fun yeah my girlfriend and I watched she's never seen she doesn't really like horror movies but like we watched the first yeah. and the second one and yeah. she liked them she really enjoyed them yeah so, oh, it's so good um so yeah that's the pretty much the story back when I was scream I just I grew up with it it's yeah. something I grew up with especially Ghostface um how about you sir I'm good man I miss you bitch <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it feels weird, like driving back and not driving back home with you. With like, you it's yeah, really strange. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, now that everything's over, it's just a little bit, and then we'll be back together. We'll be back together soon. I can't wait. Um, but, but everything so, has been good, though. So tell me, and I'll tell you. Well, before we jump into Scream Two, with Scream One, real quick, mm-hmm. since Joy Lynn watched it for the first time. What were her what were her predictions of, of the killer? <laughs> so <laughs> she reminded me of Randy because everybody yeah. was a sub a suspect. <laughs> she was like, "It's this motherfucker." No, it's this one. So she really, really like from the very beginning. She was like, "I have a theory, but I'm not gonna tell uh-huh. you." And she thought that it was Dewey the whole time. Really? Yeah, she was That's like, "It's this motherfucker." She's like, "It's him," because it. She also told me right before the part where he takes Gail out for a walk at the party, oh, and he was like, us. "Oh, it's him! It's him! He's she's gonna kill him." <laughs> so she the okay. whole time thought it was him, and then she always. I mean, obviously, she thought Billy, but she thought it was too obvious at first, and mm. then. Uh, but definitely, Stu caught her by surprise. Yeah, you know it's something when you rewatch that Billy's very suspicious throughout the whole from the very movie. get-go. Yeah, he, talk, <laughs> he talks like this. He's like, oh, yeah. I am, I am so edgy." Yeah, and um, it's also the only character that talks about horror movies besides Randy. I mean, the first thing he says is, "I was watching The Exorcist and got me thinking of you," and it's like, oh, "Yeah." What? <laughs> It's like we just saw someone talk about scary movies like a minute right. ago. <laughs> so it, funny. But it did throw her, uh, throw her off that Drew Barrymore was at the beginning of the movie. 
yeah yeah same here there was like yeah. my 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 sister-in-law doesn't really watch horror movies mm-hmm. so her seeing so few familiar faces like like you see yeah famous people um hum- humble beginnings yeah i know so with my nephew nieces and nephews what i did with them was like i was like i'm gonna give you an hour at the mm-hmm. hour mark of at the hour mark of every movie we're gonna pause it and we're gonna sit and we're gonna see who you think the killer is and after that we'll let it unfold so with my niece because we, we kind of was like hey there's gonna be two of them it's kind of obvious so she was like she said billy and Stu. she gets it then my nephew was like billy and tatum oh which hmm. tatum was very interesting to me that he that's would an think interesting that. one honestly i can kind of see it all the way up to her death so it's kind of yeah. like okay that's a good guess but those were their guesses that's interesting. And then my uh, my other nephew was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he like stopped playing the game. He's like, I don't. I just want to watch. Yeah. yeah, I think Tatum because she's so close to Sydney that it's like right. it makes it a little right. suspicious. Um, mm-hmm. but that's a good one. I, I do like that one. Yeah, I was. And it was, I was it like, would, it, hmm? it would make sense when they're having the sleepover and Tatum's like, yeah, Billy's yeah. too perfect. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's like, oh, girl, so you trying to sleep with him? Exactly. I was like, mm-hmm. excuse me, bitch, that's my man. Right. <laughs> like, I don't know why you're so interested. So those were their guesses. And obviously, we already know who. <laughs> yeah. Which, when I watched it for the rewatch, like, I think I had said, I was like, Billy was so fucking obvious. I think Stu yeah. was the only one that was, like, actually a surprise. And I feel like it's the same with this movie. Like, this movie, like, obviously, yes. the one is a surprise and the other ones, it's it feels so- obvious. Okay, so with with this one, oh, I mean, people already know it's Scream too. We already know these. Um, yeah, spoilers. <laughs> my niece, my I asked them at the hour mark, and she said she thought it was Mickey and the boyfriend again, Derek. Because mm. he's he's a little sus too. And then my nephew, because my third nephew wasn't here today, my other nephew, he said Derek and Randy. He actually blamed Randy. Oh at this wow. Point. Okay. Yeah. Um, but Mickey, my niece clocked it in when gail and dewey were at the uh, theater room mm-hmm. and the, they started showing the video footage and my niece was like mickey's the only one carrying a camera throughout the whole movie <gasps> oh my she, god that's she clocked true. it in and i was like hmm. okay you smart okay you smart. girl yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah joey thought it was uh derek and who was the other one she said oh cotton my god this movie's so full of fine ass men she she literally (laughs) was like why all these killers hot as hell i (laughs) I was like don't let you see what i talk about (laughs) these movies it's always the hot guys it's always the hot guys wait till scream six i bet yeah Um, it's it's so funny but she thought it was him it was funny because you know how like i mean spoilers i guess we're gonna talk about it but Mickey goes like, "Oh, I needed a partner, and this motherfucker disappeared on me." And she's like, "I was yeah. half right." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, but I was like, "They're not gonna repeat the boyfriend thing." I do like the whole the twister rule with the mom. I know we're not there yet, but the mom and stuff is kind of like how Friday Thirteen starts with the mom, and then it's mm-hmm. Jason. Scream starts with the son, and then it's the mother, and it's kind of like that twist in that it, French for that franchise. It's kind of cool. Yeah, and they, they, they do talk that. about it in the first one where they're like about uh, Mrs. Voorhees yeah, being the killer. So mm-hmm, it's like they brought mm-hmm. back that idea in the second one. Which I felt bad because I was like, oh, my God, I just ruined Friday the 13th for my nieces and nephews. But one of my nephews was like, oh, I knew that. And I was like, okay, good. Yeah, good, good, good. that's good. Mm-hmm. Wow, look at that. Someone in I the know. younger generation that knows I'm the slowly, twist. I'm slowly <laughs> teaching them. That's good. Slowly I'm glad. Them. Um, but... This movie, obviously directed by Wes Craven and Kevin Williams, or written by Kevin Williamson. Movie had a budget of $24 million, ended up grossing $172 million. So it grossed a lot. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah. And then we have a big-ass cast. But yeah. we have Nick Campbell as Sydney, Courtney Cox as Gail, David Arquette as Dewey. We have Sarah Michelle Gellar as Cece. We have Jada Pickett Smith as Maureen. We got uh Leaf Schreiber as Cotton Weary. We got Timothy Oliphant Hattie as fuck. Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Kennedy as Randy. Jerry O'Connell. Oh, another one. <laughs> as Derek. We got <laughs> Lori Metcalf as Debbie Salt. Dwayne Martin as Joel. Elise Neal as Hallie. And Omar Epps as Phil. This movie's cast is up. I have, might have it might be hotter than the first one. I mean, honestly, f- Gail in this movie, whoo, 
Oh my yes. god. The whole time mm-hmm. I'm like, she looks mm-hmm. amazing in this movie. Yep. And like all the oh my god, I was thirsting. Left Mickey, and right. I was like, Mickey himself, much. like that man mm-hmm. keeps aging like wine. I know. Oh my god, don't remind me. Don't remind me. Dude, so <laughs> I don't know if someone from like that's listening might remember, but did you ever watch the Spider Man series on MTV? Spider Man? Yeah, they used to have like this weird. It was like 3D, and it was like kind of weirdly. And no, I'm gonna show you a picture on screen right now. So mm-hmm. this is Gale, right? Wait, let uh-huh. me see. If I, let me see. <laughs> that's Gale. Uh huh. That's M- that's Mary Jane. <laughs> the Spider Man show. It looks like the same person. She's literally dressed up the same. That's so funny. And the oh, whole time great. I'm looking, I'm like, damn, she looks just like MJ in that show, bro. It's so that's weird. That's so funny. That's so funny. I love that. Uh, but And do we? I think he's the best in this movie. I love him. Yeah. He's so endearing, but he still has that edginess to him in this movie, and I, I fucking love yeah. him. I mean, he came back just to check on Sydney. Like, he didn't have to come back. Yeah, he did it. Yeah, and Gail's still unlikable in some parts. Like, girl, you just here for the money until the <laughs> end, where she kind of like, you know, you know, I should, I should be catching these motherfuckers, saving these people. Yep. Um, but so good. And then, did you know that originally it was supposed to be her best friend that was supposed to be the other killer? Oh, Allie. interesting. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder. Think, I think I think it got changed because I think the script got accidentally leaked, so oh. they changed it. Mm-hmm. interesting because mm-hmm. i'm like how far in did they change it because like it doesn't feel like she should be because i feel like and she's that's the thing that would have that would have been a good surprise if she wasn't if she was you know yeah she it could be seem like she's expected mm-hmm. yeah, that yeah. Could, that's true um i'm trying to think that I, I i don't remember why i honestly i don't even have a memory watching this movie before the last time i did yeah. the rewatch but um, I just I just remember it's just this movie for me feels like the first one, but with less memorable characters because besides the or the returning cast, like Mickey's yeah. the only one because he's hot. That's literally it. Hey, <laughs> like, <I think laughs> but like I love everyone's you. so forget it. <laughs> everyone's so forgettable though that I'm like okay. I forgot about Haley or Hallie for or. Me, for me it's it's not the characters for me it's the it's the movie it feels a little long yeah it's two hours bro I was like, it's, what the it's fuck? a lot long i feel like it's a lot longer where the first one you feel you get i feel like you get to stew's house pretty fast yeah and it was like over was downhill yeah and then this one just for me just i think this is why this one didn't resonate with me as much as a kid because this one just felt long so i th- I, put, I would put this one on just to watch gail's chasing because that's that that scene alone yeah. is amazing yeah and uh, Cece's cha- uh, scene is really good, and then the the one in the car. Oh those, yeah, the one in the car scenes, is really good. Those three scenes for me are like so great that I would put this one on just to watch those scenes. But other than that, I didn't really care much for it. Um, so that's why this one for me is not the like my most favorite screen movie. And and the thing is that this 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 movie is a touch on sequels and stuff, and they do mention it that some sequels surpass the original, and for a lot of people this is their first. But for yeah. me, it just it wasn't. It's not for me. Yeah, I I just yeah, it's not for me. I know that people love it, and that's fine. That's this is our opinion. No, I'm not I gonna hate it. you. I get for why it. they no no. I get why they love it. I do. I honestly do. Um, but, but I do like this one more than the third one, which I know we disagree on that, but I, yes, I don't, do. I'm not a big fan of the third one. I, I can't wait to watch it again though, because now I know what I'm expecting. So exactly. I want to see if that changes. So mm-hmm. yeah, I can't but, wait for next week because my nieces and nephews think there's two killers also in every movie. Ooh, so it's like, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, they're going to, they're going to listen to this. So, Hey y'all. Um, <laughs> Cause they're like, we can't wait to hear the episode. Yeah. So they're going to listen, but, um you want to just jump into it real quick yeah i'm down and kind of, okay so uh, sorry i have limited space no, okay. <laughs> uh so we open at the theater with uh marine and phil where they're gonna go watch the new stab movie that's based on scream which honestly though um i need to go to this theater because they gave out costumes yeah no one has ever done that i think that is this cool i mean if scream six does this Oh my god, that would be that would amazing. Be, that would be cool. I and also they have like like shit all over the the theater, like flying around. I'm like, this is so I'm cool. Like, was there ever a movie that did that went this hard? 
I'm honestly though think. and it's kind of sad because these were real murders <laughs> yeah yeah that's true <laughs> in their world it's kind of like um y'all going yeah. real hard for this mm-hmm. yeah. it's sad because which, it's kind of reality like yes with the Dahmer which, show people were dressing yep. up so which, speaking of that i think scream six is going to be a commentary on true crime Ooh, I like mm-hmm. that actually. This is very popular in the sh- with the shrine and everything. But anyways, we're not talking about that right now. Um, but I will say stab. no uh-huh. GI Jane jokes. No, <laughs> <laughs> stop. I will try my there. best. I will try my best. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're at the theater. They're gonna watch Stab, and then the Stab movie that we see here was actually directed by Robert Rodriguez. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So they're watching the movie. She goes to the go get popcorn. She comes back. She bumps into her man. Her man kind of scares her. He goes off to the bathroom where he is mudded. And mm-hmm. I, I call I, that the, you know, the glory hole. Speaking of glory hole, I couldn't <laughs> stop thinking of screen a scary I, movie. With I the, know. With the, and it's like, <laughs> this is why... Is this why these movies got ruined for me? <laughs> yeah. Like, I thought the same thing. I was like, oh, this is like with the dick on, on, in the, yes, in the exactly. brain. Exactly. It's so funny. But he gets murdered and then the killer comes back, sits next to her. And then she, she's watching the movie. She's scared. And then she gets murdered and no one's noticing her get stabbed. This, this scene is actually really effective and very scary how no one's reacting to her getting stabbed because they don't know what's going on until she's up on stage, mm-hmm. literally screaming and dying. Yeah, that's what um, uh, Joy was saying. She was like, this is horrifying. Like that. Mm-hmm. And then like the re- when you start seeing it, everyone's like, wait, what the fuck? Like she's and like they start taking their mask off in the realization. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, she was giving her Oscar award winning. <laughs> Brenda did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it was God. super a super dramatic death, but yeah. yeah, that part with like everyone just taking their mask off and realizing was kind of freaky. I was like, oh, I didn't notice that. Like, I just never really paid attention to the people. Yeah, but and it was I think a really that's cool why one. we don't get we don't get props like that at the theater. No, <laughs> it sucks like that this. this world is fucked. So, uh, yep. Um, I remember people used to cosplay for movie for for you know premieres like i remember star wars was like a big deal when i when i was in puerto rico even and it was like people were dressed up people bring props and shit but they don't do that shit no more yeah now that people can't even wear masks or anything anymore no um so we then we wake up well we cut to the next day where sydney's waking up and she gets a prank call of Ghostface, but in this one, I love that now caller ID is kind of a thing. In the first one, it wasn't. So she didn't know mm-hmm. who was calling, but then now she knows. And the guy, she's like, oh, you're just pranking me. And the guy's like, oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> she sees on the news that Cotton Weary has been let free, which he, here in this, there's a uh, Kevin Williamson. This is his cameo where he's interviewing Cotton in the TV. Mm-hmm. That's Kevin Williamson. Um, and then she sees that two people were murdered at the school, prem, uh, or at the theater, but with ghost face. Yeah. So she's kind of like, She's thinking it might come, it's coming back. So she goes to see Randy where we're in class. We meet Mickey, Cece, and Randy. They're talking about film class. It's like a movie. It's start, a movie. It's a movie class, yeah. But they're talking about sequels and how some sequels surpass the originals. And they're like talking about certain. And I'm over here like screaming like Child's Play 2, y'all. Child's Evil Dead 2, bro. Yeah. But <laughs> come on. <laughs> they say Aliens, uh, T2, <laughs> House, the second story, which no. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, Godfather 2. Yeah, Godfather 2. So, okay, Aliens is very good. Yeah. I remember it, watching, it, and I think I remember that one more than the first one. Well, Alien and Terminator, I feel like it's the same thing. You have to, it depends on what you're in the mood for. Because That's true. Alien, Alien and T1 is pretty much the horror movie ones. Yeah. Where and, there's, when then T2 and Aliens is more the action one. Yeah. And it's because, mm-hmm. obviously, it's James Cameron. So he's like, blockbuster yeah. kind of guy. And yeah. yeah, I would say like T2, obviously we watch that shit for fun. <laughs> so like right, exactly. it, it is a fun ass movie to watch. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't remember if I've seen house two. I don't remember. Saw it's, the first it's a one. comedy horror. I oh, haven't seen the first yes. one. Yeah. The first it's, one's really fucking crazy. It's a really weird movie. Um, but then, uh, Sydney shows up to talk to Randy. She's asking him, do you think this is going to connect it to us? And he's kind of in denial about it. He just thinks that it just, it's just a coincidence. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also thinks he's going to get her, but she got a man named Derek who we meet here too. 
Uh, Randy here looks better than he did in the first one. I feel. Yeah, he has the but, little goatee, like chin, the yeah. chin hairs. But yeah, it, they got money. That's what happens. They got money because even Gail got <laughs> that friend's paycheck, and and she definitely had a glow up. They make a they make a joke about Jennifer Aniston in this movie. Yeah, and David Schwimmer it was about friends. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm like, and what Tori the fuck? Spelling. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which Sydney got her her wish from the first movie. Well, she said no. She well, this is the thing. She said she wanted to be played by someone else, but she said, "With my luck, it'll be Tori Spelling." Oh, and she's it's kind of funny oh, that right. yeah, and it's kind of funny that <laughs> she gets which, Tori Spelling. <laughs> yeah, which is funny. Tori Spelling and Scream Two and Scary Movie Two. Just to confuse us, uh, just to confuse us, <laughs> that they just did that shit on purpose. I know, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but then we, so basically, this whole scene is here is kind of everyone just kind of getting together again, because mm-hmm. it's like all in campus. So all the all the teens are together. Gail shows up with her new cameraman Joel. Uh, we meet Debbie Saul, who's the this news reporter lady walking around. Uh, she's Gail's biggest fan. Uh, then we have Gail questioning the chief where all the teens are watching. This Sydney sees that Gail is there. Dewey shows up to check on Sydney. And uh, Dewey's we, theme song, fucking love I, it, man. I like oh, it so much. So good. Yeah. It like fits yeah. them. It's like you know instantly who the who's that mm-hmm. theme song belongs to. And it's yep. so good. It just it's yeah. that innocence kind of I don't know, it's great. Well, he's being like a big brother to Sydney. Mm-hmm. You know, he did lose his, his younger sister, and and that was Sydney's best friend. Yeah. So and then it's very I, it's he, very touching. Yeah, and here he has the little limp, and his hands a little paralyzed because of the injuries from the last one. Um, this motherfucker always getting injured. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it was, there. Yeah, it's so funny because Joe. <laughs> whenever we get to that scene, like I'll tell you what, what she, how she reacted. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but then. After uh, Sydney says bye to Dewey after the little convo, Gail kind of bum rushes Sydney with Cotton, and Cotton thought he was that Sydney agreed to this, but she did it, and Gail's kind of being you know Gail, so she gets bitch slapped again. <laughs> I love that she tr- she thought she dodged the first one like hmm, bitch, boom, <laughs> gets yeah, it a second yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, because she goes uh uh-uh, uh uh uh, and then hmm, again. <laughs> but you know, Gail was just lie to Cotton. Cotton. Sydney didn't agree to this, and then. Gail runs into Dewey and Dewey's super salty about her book. He's like, mm-hmm. page 24, Dewey <laughs> this and that. And he's so bad. That I she get wrote it. him a certain way. No, I get it. Because the movie's based on her book, too. Mm-hmm. The stab. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, it's so, just like she wrote his character to be a complete dumbass, which, granted, cr- kind of accurate. Is, but it's like, I will doofus, be bad too. Yeah. Like, damn, <laughs> bitch, I thought you respected me. <laughs> Right. So, yeah, because then Scary Movie took that book and they made Doofy out of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Officer Doofy here. <laughs> Reporting for duty. Yeah. So, oh, we also meet to uh, sorority sisters because Hallie, Sydney's new friend, she's trying to get her into a sorority. Mm-hmm. So we meet uh, Rebecca Gayhart, who plays Sister Lewis, and I think Sister Murphy's the other chick uh, who's played by Portia de Rossi. But then... We cut to the next night. The uh, we're at a sorority party, big party. Sydney shows up with Hallie. We then go to Cece, who's alone at home at Omega Beta Zeta. <laughs> Shout out! Yeah. Shout out Where- Omega Beta Zeta. <laughs> Zeta. <laughs> <laughs> Which she's home alone because she is the kind of like the the designated driver. Where if a sister comes home drunk, she's the one to take care of them. Mm. Um, which sucks. I'm like, um, I want to go to the party too. Y'all, y'all be responsible for each other. Yeah, or like, rotate, bro. Rotate. Yeah, this is Omega Beta Zeta, not Omega <laughs> Beta Babysit. Like the fuck. <laughs> also, where does this take place? Because I know it's not in Woodsboro Ohio, anymore. Ohio. Oh, they're in yes. college in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. I forgot. So Gail said they're not that. even in California anymore. Yeah. Yeah, because I know so, that that someone you hear someone in the background going. Oh my God! It, I know people died in in California. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, Cece gets a phone call. She thinks it's her boyfriend, but it's not. It's Ghostface. It's never and your boyfriend. Nobody's trying to talk to you. It's 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 never the boyfriend. It's never the boy. It's always a killer. It's never yep. a dick call. Yep. But <laughs> eventually, the phone call leads to him saying, "Do you want to die tonight, Cece?" And this this scene and basically she's home alone she goes outside she thinks someone's in the house someone is in the house but when she goes back inside it's just a friend of hers 
And then this friend leaves, but you see Ghostface sneaks in the house right behind, right through the, another door. It's so when so she puts good. the alarm, it's useless. Mm-hmm. And I love Which that I she's think- watching Nosferatu. And yeah, it's like Nosferatu yeah. sneaking in the house and whatever. Yep. Also, they you know they probably got in trouble for using Halloween, so they had to use some public domain type shit. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but I do love that it's like him sneaking in the house, but then you see Ghostface like sneaking yep. as well. I was like, oh, that's and cool. They're that kind of using the, the music in Nosferatu too. Kind of mm-hmm. like the first movie, how they use yeah. Halloween. Yeah, which in that first movie, the Halloween ending repeats like three times because they right? kind of had to rewind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, it's it's off. It's off. Like, they go, they run, they chasing, and then we're back, and it's, like, still in that three seconds. It's really yeah. funny. You know, yeah. <laughs> so this is going to be from not the second one, but in the first movie, when Randy is going, like, Jamie, turn around, right mm-hmm. behind you, Jamie, it's weird how that, that scene has layers to it because he's not talking to just Jamie Lee Curtis. The actor's name is Jan- Jamie Kennedy. Jamie Kennedy, yeah. So it's like he's talking to himself. In the, yeah. ca- in the character <laughs> so it's really <laughs> weird how he's breaking the fourth wall completely yeah if you th- yeah if you put it that way yeah it's kind of weird yeah yeah because her and it's her real name jamie lee it's not like he's saying laurie turn her out yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it's super weird <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah this scene is so well done and this movie really does tension so well because and the it's, chasings are really good in this yeah. movie yeah Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, they keep the aspect of him getting his ass beat or tripping and everything, or tripping everywhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it makes him just perfect. Like I, I love that little bit of Ghostface. That it has yeah. to be there. It makes him more human than just exactly. Michael kind of running through everything. Exactly. So yeah, she he comes out of the closet. He kind of chases her through the house. They run all the way up to the attic, which is a funny commentary because it's like the dumb girl who always runs up the stairs and gets murdered because. Mm-hmm. He throws her through the glass door and then he throws her over the balcony after he stabs her and she dies. Yep. And we come back to the party where if you look closely behind you, you see Stu Mocker walking by. Oh, um, really? Yeah. He has a cameo that if you look really close, he's in the party in the back. Oh. Because it's because he was dating Neve Campbell at the time. So he was Oh, on set. gotcha. Mm-hmm. So does that but mean he's that he's too. alive? He's alive. Yep. So he's confirmed. He's in the movie. I, I, don't I, was make like, the rules. I, I was like, I told my nephews, I was like, hey, like, so Stu Mocker's in the background, but it's not Stu, it's, he's dead. It's just Matthew Lillard, like, as a cameo. <laughs> That's great. That's, I didn't even notice, I didn't even notice him. That's awesome. It's, it's super subtle. Like, if you don't catch it, it's like literally a second. Oh, gotcha. And he's like super blonde. Like, yeah, it's really That's, weird. That's great. It's funny. But, I enjoy the whole time. It's like, oh, that's Shaggy. That's Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time he was on screen. Yep, and then with Cece, it's like, oh, that's Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, she looks familiar. And then I told her, I was like, oh, it's Daphne, bro. <laughs> that's so yeah. weird. And Buffy. Well, it's yeah, funny because we're like, we're like, oh, that's Buffy. And my niece's and nephew are like, who? Because they're super young. They don't know who Buffy is. Dude, so they're like, crazy. it's Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, you should have said that earlier. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and we're, then we were like, you know what? We should just start watching Buffy. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Um, oh, Buffy was great. Yeah, so the party gets interrupted because everyone's like, oh, police are out across the street, so they go run that way to see what's happening. Uh, Debbie Salt's already there. Gail kind of gets their second. And You then... know what's weird? Do you think there was a Shining reference when mm-hmm. uh, when they kill, when they find, um, uh, what's her name's body? Cece? Yeah. Oh, wait, is it here? When? Oh, no, it's when Sydney gets chased. Sorry, I'm, I'm, th- I'm, I'm thinking far ahead. Okay, okay. So... Yeah, so then Sydney, she's alone in the house with Derek, but Derek's mm-hmm. outside. He's like, oh, let's just go. She grabs her things, but then the phone rings. And I'm like, girl, it's not your house. Just don't even answer it. Just keep walking. That's a good but, point. It is not her house. <laughs> I didn't think about that. I would I would have just ignored it. Like, oh, somebody will call back later. Whatever. It's not my business. I would have yeah. kept, like, with Derek's fine ass, I would have been getting on that <laughs> immediately. Fuck answering that phone call. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame right. you, Right. He's, oh my God, when he's tied up later in the movie, I was like, oh, I wish I could find him just like this. <laughs> but anyways, so she answers the phone and it's Ghostface and then she gets attacked. She gets chased. Derek tries to help her, but then he gets his arm cut, which becomes a thing in this franchise that it's mm-hmm. like, sus. It's like, mm-hmm. I mean, hey, in the newer one, it's exactly like, open the door, he's cut already. Like, it's like, mm, yeah. that's a little weird. Yeah. In the arm, out of all places, too. Well, that's the thing. It's always in the arm, and it's, like, mm-hmm. a little sus. I don't want to spoil nothing, I don't, but, because... 
my nieces and nephews won't be listening, so I don't want to oh, spoil the killers that's for true. the future. Are um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So then she gets attacked. He saves her. They end up at the hospital where Derek is being uh, or Dewey's very sus of Derek now. Like where mm-hmm. the fuck? Why? Why? Where, where are you? What were you doing? And then Derek's kind of throwing the same shade at Dewey. Um, Mickey's trying to comfort Sydney here. And then I think Wes Craven has a cameo here where you kind of see him in the in the hospital. I think as a oh, doctor. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So then Sydney now has security guards. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, girl, you got money. I know. It's security. like, even from the I first I never understood because, right, they came out of nowhere, right? Yeah, they were just introduced that they were in, they were like keeping an eye on her. Like I don't know where the, it must have been the officer chief of police that got him for her because it's like who got these guys for her? Yeah, but like that costs money, and it's like even in the first one, her house is huge. It's like, Daddy, what are you doing for a living? I don't know. Did you did you see her balcony or <laughs> yeah? Her? And then you come out in views, and I'm like, damn, uh, in the middle of nowhere, like her own property. <laughs> it's like, they, what you do? <laughs> what her daddy do? Well. <laughs> If you think about it, they kind of make fun of it. It's a scary movie where her dad's like a drug lord. That oh, works yeah, with Pablo that's... Escobar. Yeah. He's like, there was some crazy guy. They put drugs everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So, she has security. She's kind of like breaking things off with Derek because mm-hmm. she doesn't want anyone else to get hurt, which I understand. And then when um, Gail and Dewey are trying to get some help, or Gail's trying to get help from Dewey, but then... She doesn't want to help her. She Gail's being Gail. And then Debbie Salt of May appears trying to talk to Gail and Gail being a bitch to her, which she deserves it. Well, I get um, it. But th- she does, a, does say a line here that it made me mm-hmm. think about the newer movie. If what? they're recreating the Woodsboro killer kills, they uh-huh. might be from Woodsboro. So now I'm like, they're in New York in this new one. Do you think yeah. they're from Woodsboro? Hmm. Well, you see, that's interesting with this new one because this new one seems to be playing off. Well, these new movies seem to be playing off the new, first trilogy. Yeah. And then with the shrine in the new trailer, it seems to be at a theater. And then the third act may seem a little bit at that theater, which this one's third act is at a theater thing. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, I mean, someone could have followed them there. The yeah. question is who? That's true. There's so many. Oh my god! This movie. There's so many theories going around. So many theories. They're saying and, that the hot guy in the subway with the jean jacket, one, oh. he's wearing blue, and the killers are always wearing blue, for true. some reason. Yes, true. Two, they're saying that he kind of looks like Cotton Weary, so he oh, could he be out. some a descendant from Cotton. Hmm. And it's just like with there's Scream, so much. With Scream Six. There's so much that I just I'm at the point where I don't even know anymore. I'm just ready for. I'm ready for it. Like. Just yeah. I want to watch it already. And it's like Scream 5 also opened that Reddit is a thing and that they yes. have a subreddit. So it's like well, it could literally be anybody in the world. Well, in this movie, that's how they met Mickey and uh, uh, Mrs. Loomis. They met through oh. an online uh, oh, internet. Craig- thing. Craigslist. <laughs> Whatever it was in 97. Um, it was like the dark web or something. That's how they met. Yeah. So, so and it's been a thing. It. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's been a thing since hit this movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then we cut to the cafeteria scene where Derek does his whole, I think I love you and what am I so afraid? So with this, you know, for this actor, for this character, they had them when they came to audition, they had them do this scene, just this really? scene. And this is how Jerry O'Connell got his part. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You see, like if I had a partner and they did that. While they're singing, I would get on the table with them, like, oh, like, I'm going to join you. I would grab the sharpest thing and slice my throat in front of everybody because this is the most embarrassing thing anyone could do for somebody. But he's he's very cute. <laughs> and, okay, but in what world everybody starts fucking, yeah, that was so cool. It's Nobody would do that. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> no, maybe today. Bitch, this is, this is real life. This ain't Greece. <laughs> but, <laughs> but honestly... He sings like that. He's getting his dick sucked five minutes later. <laughs> you are such a hoe. <laughs> Y'all. Sing, to, sing on. Oh girl, we going to my room after this. And I um, love that Mickey's being his hype man. Like, come on, everybody. Give him a round of applause. I'm yep, like, okay, Mickey, yep. calm down. You you, you yep. literally like him. You like Derek. <laughs> I would wash the hell out of that. I'm just saying. Men.com. Reverse in line. 
<laughs> um, but then we cut to the uh, the Tori Spelling cameo where she's doing an interview for Stab, and then we kind of see like a real quick scene of of Stab where it's like her as Sydney, and then the, uh, I forgot his name as Billy. Oh, it's another it's, uh, famous actor. Yeah, he's. Oh my god, I was literally just talk. I was talking about him earlier. Uh, Luke Wilson. That's always Wilson's yes, brother. Luke Luke Wilson. Yeah, and yeah, it's that so was funny because like, they look so old. <laughs> Yeah, they're like old as men. Like it's that joke where they're like old people playing yeah. high schoolers. Mm -hmm. It's so mm -hmm. funny. But this is when Randy and Dewey are trying to figure out who could it be, because Dewey already has the mindset that it's someone that knows her in the mm -hmm. group. And then Randy gives us the rules of the sequels here, which honestly I always wanted to know what the third one, how he was gonna finish that sentence, because mm -hmm. the rules are. The body count is always bigger. The death scenes are always much more elaborate with more blood and gore. And then the third one is if you want your films to become a successful franchise, never ever. And he gets cut off and we never find out what that third rule is. And I, it's always been like, what were you going to say? I wonder if it's like kill off the main character. Well, that's that's for the third one, because in the third one's like oh, everyone's at stake and even you, Sydney. Like anyone can well, die. Well, no. If you want to, if you want it to be a success, don't kill off the main character. Oh, don't kill off. That could be it. Because it's like if you're it. gonna do a trilogy, or, or have the killer come back. That's true. At the end, because I think at the end of this movie they were supposed to have a ghost face watching Sydney from the tower as if mm. as it pans out. And I wish they would have kept that because that would have made more sense in three that someone's already someone has always been around. That would be cool you know, for that kill for that killer. Yeah, um, like someone's already con like making plans. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That would be interesting. But yeah, I always wanted to know what Randy was gonna finish his third rule. Third rule, and I wonder if they have it or that's how they left it in the script too. Yeah, that would be yeah. interesting to know if they actually mm -hmm. had that third rule. Hmm. I was yeah. like trying to think. I'm like, what would they do if you what? ever want your franchise to become successful? I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of like sequels and how they end, and it's like. They, the sequels from what I remember always have a definite ending, except Nightmare. Nightmare kind of ends with a cliffhanger. Yeah, because even Evil too. Dead Two has like some sort of continuation. Yeah, exactly. But then you look at Child's Play where Chucky, Chucky well, the dies. Original, the, the original ending he dies, but then the alternative ending, he, you see that his face gets formed again and he like smiles. Yeah. So it's kind of like I wonder if it's like that the killer always comes or you see the killer at the end or some bullshit. Like don't like always that. don't always kill the killer. Oh, assume or that, that he's like that. dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that could that could be true. Um, or it could be the whole thing where they don't kill the main character too. Yeah, because it's like you always say if you, there's a third one, then there's always a possibility you, for a third one. Exactly. Um, but yeah, then we cut to um Gail's cameraman who he wants to quit. He's like, I don't want to be involved in this. I know your first cameraman died, and I don't want to be another victim, which is really funny. He's like, we, you know, my people <laughs> always get they murdered. Don't so I, I, yeah, they don't last, so I got to go. <laughs> and, and it's so funny because literally the first two kills of this movie were two people yeah. of color. Like, yeah, I was that's like, true. damn, bro. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. But it's, it was weird because I was like, why, why are they being targeted? And they're being targeted because of their names. Because it's Maureen, which is Maureen Prescott, was Sydney's mother. That's why she oh. got targeted. And then um, the guy, I think his name was Stevens. Yeah, it Stevens. It was Phil Stevens, which I was trying to remember who that from the first one is. I kind of forgot. And then Cece was Cece Cooper or Casey Cooper, who Casey was the first victim in or was Drew Barrymore's character. Oh, I didn't even so, think about yeah, that. Yeah, so the murders in this movie are based on names from people from Woodsboro. That's why she yeah. says like they're they're recreating the kills from Woodsboro because exactly. that's the that's the pattern that they're following. Exactly. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Then that's crazy. So, How many motherfuckers y'all have to Google to have the same names in, in the, your town? Well, <laughs> well, if you think about it, with Mickey being the killer, he knows people around the school. They were students. I guess that's true. So he was yeah. probably catching students with names that were you know from the original uh, murders. That's true. Um, yeah. So then. Sydney is in theater class where her professor is kind of encouraging her to do it. So she ends up doing it. But then she sees Ghostface as the play is going on and she's been getting very disoriented. There's a lot going on. There's thunder, there's lightning. And then she thinks she's going to be attacked, which do you think he was there? Or do you think she's seeing him? Because I think he was actually there. I do think it's actually there specifically because you see him push the one in front of her and then and you then see him running. You see him yeah. running. 
So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I think he's actually there. But then I'm like, maybe he's not supposed to. And it's her kind of having PTSD. Yeah. And but it's like accidental that he just disappears and that we see his feet like running. Yeah, because you kind of you kind of see him run. O- you kind of see him run away. But it's like no one really questions who this guy that just ran off was. Yeah, yeah. and so, also so the director like, seeing everything and mm-hmm. he doesn't question it at but all. But the thing is, it's 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 funny because the mask kind of looked like Ghostface. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it could be Which just you- a play on the PTSD. Mm-hmm. Which I can't wait for the shrine and the new one because these masks are in the background. Oh, see. that's sick. Yeah. Ah, oh, so excited. Uh, yeah. So then, Derek shows up to pick her up, and I guess Mickey was supposed to pick her up, but he had to do editing. Mm-hmm. So that's why Derek went to pick her up, and this is when she comes super, super suspicious. She's like, "No, we're done. We're breaking up. Like, I can't do this." Yeah. Um, and he Good. understands. He's like, "I get it." So nice guy, nice guy, Derek. Mm-hmm. Super hot. So <laughs> then, <laughs> this is when we get Randy, Dewey, and Gail. Trying to figure out who could be there on the fucking uh, campus grounds. Gail gets a phone call, but she doesn't answer. Randy answers it. So it's kind of interesting that if you think about it, Gail's never gotten a phone call from Ghostface until this new movie. Oh, yeah. And here it was supposed to be her phone call, but Randy takes her phone and answers it. So it's not so you her. know what that means. Oh, uh, no. Gail. Um, I don't, we'll see. We'll see. Ooh. I don't want to. I don't want to speak on that. I don't want to confirm nor deny anything because it's kind of like splitting. Like, mm. but but you make a good point. She never does get a call from him. Yeah. Until, until now. This new one. Um. But yeah. But this, this is, is where they're, they're kinda, looking for everybody. Yeah. This is a really good. This one actually. Mm-hmm. This is another really good scene that I really yeah. love because Gail and Dewey are kind of jumping on everyone who has a cell phone while Randy's talking to the killer. So he's kind of taunting the killer, talking shit about Stu and Billy, and then I think. This is supposed to be um, Mrs. Loom is doing this kill because she says yes. it later that he talks shit about my son, so I murdered his ass. Yeah, he's like, I got um, a little knife happy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is where Randy gets it. He kind of gets bum rushed into the van by Ghostface and then gets murdered. So, goodbye, Randy. I know. So, this was a this was a, da- a really sad one because I'm like, damn, I really wanted him to continue. Yeah, it been I, I would like to, to see, see him. Mm-hmm. But... I wonder with him dying in the second one, if the twins, any one of the twins are victims in the sequel, kind of following the footsteps of the uncle dying in the sequel. And oh, damn, I wonder who could it be? Because I feel like hmm, I think it might be the boy. I, I say forgot his name. Chad. Yeah, I think it's Chad. Because yeah, I feel I like she's so important. She is literally like Randy. Well, and she the, knows all the, the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I feel like she would do kind of like the opposite because I feel like Randy kind of acted out of character in this scene because he's being so yeah. cocky. And it's like, I feel like Randy wouldn't have because done that he did, because it's plain daylight and he's in the middle of a field and he didn't think he was going to get attacked. Mm, I guess that makes sense. He, he got caught off guard. Yeah, because he got he didn't think he was he didn't think he, the fucker was going to be in the van. That's I wouldn't have thought they were going to be in the van. Yeah, and it's plain daylight. So but. Yeah, that could be. I mean, he was smart in the in. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Cause then, if you kill Chad, Chad is they're losing muscle right there. Mindy has a knowledge of horror. I don't know. I don't. So hard. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, this is where Randy. You know, he died. He did yeah, his foot. And then Gail and Dewey and Joel find him, and Gail has her iconic scream here, and it's very sad. Then Sydney is at the library where she gets a sus message on the computer. I know, and like, you're going to fucking die. It's like, Jesus. Tonight. <laughs> like, what the and fuck? <laughs> her and security caught- put, yeah, because her security puts her off to a corner, like, stay right here. And then Kai's like, hey, Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then I love that Kai is like, motherfucker, you, even though you were, you know, let go from prison because you're innocent. Yeah, you. She's like he's like being so fucking aggressive to her, and like well, surprised yes. that he and gets arrested. I don't want to, and I don't want to say I get it because I don't get it. But like he, all he, all he's like, we should become famous, so we need to work together, and get on these talk shows because we have a lot of history and things to talk about. That's this whole thing. He just wants to become famous out of the what happened last year and him being. Um, blamed for what happened, and I get and it. It's she, like he lost everything after he went to jail for a year, exactly. so it's like he's so trying he's to trying rebuild to, himself. Exactly, and but it's like for me, she, he gets so mad. 
Well, the thing is that he makes him look really suspicious because it's like, why are you here? Yeah. And it's like, you would think, yeah, I blamed him. So now he's mad and he's probably trying to kill me. Yeah. So like, mm -hmm. but yeah, then he gets taken away. He gets arrested, but then he eventually does get let go. Sydney does find out about Randy. Um, and he, he was very privileged, privileged, white man privileged in this scene, <laughs> the way he was talking and acting and like, let me go. And I was like, Oh my God. But on yeah. it, Lee Shriver, fine as fuck too. <laughs> <laughs> kind of weary. It's so crazy kind of weary. to think that he was fucking saber tooth from like I the know. X-Men movies. Three, it's like, three whoa, years bro. later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then, then we go to, um, where Joel, Joel quits on Gale. Cause he's like, someone died in my van. I'm not doing this. I'm piecing the fuck out. He's smart. Then, yeah. And then Gail and Dewey, they go to, they decide to start working together. Cause they're, Gail starts feeling bad at this point. Yeah. So she's like, I need, we need to catch this guy. Whoever's doing this, we need to do this. So they go to like this auditorium or this theater classroom where they play. Cause they needed a VCR. They're playing all their tapes to see if they can see the killer in the background. They kind of get kind of heated here. Start getting freaking dicky. Mm -hmm. And then Ghostface appears and he's playing the camera stuff on another TV that he's been catching on camera. This is where my niece was like, oh, it's Mickey. He's the only guy carrying a camera throughout the whole movie. That's so smart. Which I, was like, I didn't even think about that. That's yeah. She's yeah, a little detective. Really, I know. So proud of her. So then, <laughs> um, yeah, so then Ghostface attacks them. Dewey falls down the stairs. Gail has this crazy... I, dude, I used to put this VHS specifically for this scene. Like, other scenes too, but like specifically this one. Like, yeah. the, the, uh, the fucking uh, the sound room thing where, like, it's like a maze and she's hiding and Ghostface is, like, kind of looking for her is so good. Mm -hmm. It's so, so, so good. It's, um, so, it's so great. This It's just this movie really... That's one thing I do appreciate. It's just the, the tension that it builds. Yeah. And it's yeah. like... All these chase scenes, like even that one, that is a te a technically a chase scene, but it's so like quiet and thought through, and it's mm -hmm. like even using the um with a stage or what I don't know what that's called, the, like the music room, and yeah. like how one side is quiet, it's like soundproofed, and the, the other one is not. Room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so cool, like that w the way that they just worked everything together. It's so yeah, so good. But then Dewey goes looking for her. And then he gets it and then Ghostface tries to catch her, but she pushes like a shelf in front of the door. He can't get to her. But then here we think that, or we, you know, we assume that Dewey got it. Um, so then we cut to fucking Sydney. She's leaving. Derek comes to say bye. And then Derek gets attacked by his frat brothers because he gives Sydney the necklace and that's against the rules. Yeah, so I'll then we get, we get a real quick scene of him getting hazed and stuff and he's shirtless on a star tied up. And whew, you like, know, it's, so, <laughs> it's so funny because I'm like, they have Derek tied up and he's all muscular and they're pouring beer down his pants and everything. And it's, it's like those people are like make bullying homosexual people and then like making like... Oh, what's up, Derek? Let me suck your dick, bro. No homo, though. Like, they're not, <laughs> they want to lick his abs. Like, oh, look at you. You're gay, bro. You're letting a man lick your abs. Like, oh, Jesus. that's his punishment. That's his whole entire punishment. <laughs> yeah. I can't be in a frat house. I would have been, like, all over the place. <laughs> all over the place. Especially if you look like Derek. I would have been all over the place. But, oh, my God. Uh, another great scene where Sydney and Hallie are on their way out of town. And then they stop at a red light and then they get attacked by Ghostface. They, Ghostface kills the security. The other security guard, he takes the car, jumps on top of the car. He's he's not shooting. Where we're like, why don't he just shoot? And it's like, he doesn't shoot because the Sydney back. could get shot. Yeah. Yeah. There's two and I'm like, innocent Sydney, people. <laughs> get down. Just get down, girl. Yeah. But they also, crash. cover your face a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like a bullet's gonna stop for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> but Sydney, they crash, and then oh, this 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 kills really gruesome. The guy's fucking gets impaled through the head, mm -hmm. and, and I feel like that that death might be one of the best one in the series. Because I'm like I'm thinking of one that's that gruesome, and I don't remember one being that bad, like um, that gruesome. I don't remember. In well, the third too, one, mean, nothing comes to mind. He got impaled in the head. I guess yeah. <laughs> And it's like, because <laughs> even like, I would say the close second would be Tatum's in the first one. Because you, for a second, you see her mm. head getting squished. 
No, I think I think on uh no part four takes the cake. What's Which one? Name? Olivia. She gets attacked in the room and her, her guts are everywhere. And oh, uh, is that is like yeah, that is a good one. Hmm. Yeah, that is a pretty I think good she one. She takes the cake. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So this scene is very tense because Ghostface is knocked out. Sydney and Hallie are stuck in the back, so they kind of have to jump through the front in order to get out of the car. So they have to go through him or in front so of well him. So well done. And it's super well done. It's super scary. You don't know if, if the person's going to wake up or not. She tries to take off the mask, but then she hits the horn and she gets scared. It, it's just so, so fucking tense. And, and I love that it, it zooms into his eyes, but you can't tell if he's fucking awake or not because he could just be faking yep. it. And it's like, oh, yep. bitch, you came to me. Like, it's This so scene good. as a kid used to scare me because exactly for that. Is this motherfucker up and just waiting to grab her? Like, mm-hmm. oh, so good. But they do manage to get out of the car. They start running. But then Sydney's like, L- no, I have to go back and see who it is. But when she does, they're gone. Hallie gets murdered. So Sydney just runs. And she ends up going to the theater again at the play. Which I thought it was very random that she ran to the theater. Yeah, it's places, a little bit the random. Theater. Um, but I was like, okay, we'll do the third act here, I guess. I guess. Uh, it just looks cool, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, where she finds Derek up on the star, mm-hmm. Ghostface shows up, and it's Mickey reveals himself. Boom. And the way he revealed himself, I was like, ooh, daddy. Damn. Talk to me like that. <laughs> and <laughs> I love that he's just like, oh, this motherfucker disappeared on me. And right. it's like, he's it's manipulating like, her. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's like, fuck, he's blaming Derek. And Derek's like, oh, yep. I'm gonna fucking kill you. And yep. it, it, he's smart, bro. He's he's like a crazy ass psycho. Like, you know what's sad though? That it's like Derek dies thinking that Sydney thought he was a killer. And it's very mm-hmm. sad. Yeah. Because Mickey just shoots him and kills him. And then, um, <laughs> also, Mickey's motive, they forget about him. <laughs> right, right, yeah. He dies, and that's it. <laughs> he goes back up. Oh, he went back. He went to heaven. He went, he um, went straight to heaven, like yeah. Jesus. He was like, he was crucified up, up there. Yup, looking fine as hell. But then, <laughs> fucking Mickey's motive is crazy. Like he's like, I want to get caught. I want because he he basically wants to become famous of doing these murders. Like yeah, I did in this. in blaming movies because he's like, yeah. nobody has ever blamed movies before, so I'll do yep. it. Yep. Like, um, hmm, interesting. Which, which Billy says a line in the first one about that, like movies don't make psycho killers or something. He says, uh, make, sci- it, make uh, movies don't make psychos; it just makes psychos more creative." Exactly, and Mickey's using this as or the movies to blame for his murders, mm-hmm. and then him and Sydney kind of have a debacle. But then, uh, he tricks her into thinking it's Gail because Gail shows up first, the second killer. But then it's like. And she's like, Mrs. Loomis. Yeah. And, like, and Gil's like, yeah. Which, it's, this reveal's really good. Yeah, It's it really is. good, because you don't expect it to be the mother. At least I didn't. Um, no, at all. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting that. At first, it came out a little bit weird for me, because I was like, it's a good one, but it feels mm-hmm. like out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, it's like, I wish we would have somehow in known about Loomis' mother a little bit more because he just yeah. mentions it like he just goes, "Mom left yeah, me." Yeah, in the fir- yeah in the first one, we just know that she left him, and he has and he was very hurt, and he has abandonment issues from that. Yeah. Um but it's not my favorite in the franchise, I will say, but it, it's a good one. It's a yeah, good one. like it's not um, the worst for sure. It's not the worst. Yeah, but yeah, she shows up, and you know she's just pretty much out for revenge. <laughs> we'll leave the worst reveal for next week. <laughs> Is it the worst? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Whatever. I'm. We're not gonna get into that right now. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, she's basically out for revenge for her her son. They they this whole scene is just that Gail gets accidentally shot because she kills Mickey because she's like Mickey's motive is really stupid. What? I just had a thought. What? Do you know how like her motive is just like Mrs. Voorhees? Yeah. When she's talking to the Buffy, she goes, kill, 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 die, die, die. Yeah. If, oh, yeah, my God. Yeah, Whoa. The phone. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. So they were playing the whole Friday the 13th thing. Wow. Yeah. I just thought about, oh, that's crazy. That's really, no, that's really cool, though. I I didn't think about it either. That's really awesome. If that's yeah. Like, I, that's I like do. the little, if that's the clue to like, hey, it's his mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's actually, I think that might be, because I'm like thinking if there's another one. 
But yeah. I don't think so. I think it's. I think that might. I mean, be and it. she's throughout the movie very randomly bothering Gale, and it's like, who the fuck is this lady? I do um, like. I will say, I thought it came out of nowhere because I was like, oh, it's just some random lady. But then, like, really paying attention to this, like, mm-hmm. I do like that they kind of gave her sort of like she's a fangirl of Gale Weathers. Yeah. Like, she's just yeah. not just one random lady. Right. And it's like mm-hmm. I do like that she has some sort of meaning to be there because she wants yeah, to be yeah. the next Gale Weathers because Gale Weather kind of. She's like, oh, she's too famous right now. Right. And she mm-hmm. she's gonna fall. She's gonna fall off. Um, but yeah, she kind of she nurtures make she nurtured Mickey as a mom. Got him into college to do this. She ends up killing him because she's like, his motive is really stupid. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking, but I'm here for you. <laughs> I don't blame him. Anyways, but- <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't blame her. <laughs> um, and then uh, Gail gets accidentally shot by Mickey as he's dying, which was kind of funny. Yeah. And then it's like, motherfucker just to shoot it. And then... <laughs> she needed to be out of the scene, so that's the yeah, way out. <laughs> exactly. And then Gail and Mrs. Loomis get into it. They start fighting. Uh, Sydney starts using the stage as, like, a distraction to try to get her. Which uh, I don't buy this shit, bro. Like... It, it's really good, though. It's very dramatic. It's, it's, it is it's, very it dramatic. It's up the stakes, like, as a sequel, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, but the rocks falling and she falls like they're real, bro. Those are foam. <laughs> like, my sister, <laughs> my si- my si- so my sister in law doesn't watch horror movies, but at the moment she looked up and she's like, "Those are foam." <laughs> it's like, yeah. and she's like, oh. <laughs> she falls over like they're literally like boulders. Like it's yeah, so it's, it's, it's so dramatic. It's really fu- it's really fun. Um, I do like the shot where she looks through the peephole and you see yes. her eye and then you see Sydney with the axe. That was really cool. I was um, trying to say, I think it reminded me of Friday the 13th as well. When, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if it's part one or part two. No, it, it's a, it's part one when, uh, when the final girl sees Mrs. Voorhees, when she locks herself in the, in the, in the pantry. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Cause yeah, I think she looks out be. and she's walking, trying to knock over the door. Oh yeah, maybe. It's been a while remember. since I've seen it. So. Been, yeah, it's been a minute. But, yeah, they kind of... Then Cotton shows up with a gun, and she's trying to make a deal with Cotton to let her kill Sydney. I can make you famous. And Cotton's mm-hmm. very confused on what the fuck is going on. Because this motherfucker like, don't Ooh. even know what's going on. No. And he then thinks it's like, about oh. it. Right. And then it's like, oh, this is Billy's mother, blah, blah, blah. And then Sydney's like, hey, if you don't kill me, I'll go on TV with you. Whatever. Yeah. So then he's consider it done, and he shoots, <laughs> but we don't know who he shot. So we yeah. don't know what decision he made. <laughs> Shoots both of them at the same time. <laughs> right. Like, oh, she old. She'll die. She'll be fine. He did a wanted. He did the curve bullet. Boom. <laughs> um, but yeah, then it's revealed that he shot Mrs. Loomis. They get up and then Gail's like, Gail appears. And then which like, oh, that's be- a good jump scare. I was going to yeah. say that yeah, really got joy the- <laughs> <laughs> because it's like you're expecting uh, B- uh Mrs. Loomis to like come up. To be the the like jump Billy, the, last, yeah. the final scare, but then you see her hand show up, and I was like, "Oh shit, that fucking got yeah. me." Well, then they're looking at her, and then they're like, "Oh, do you think she'll come back?" And when they do say that, then Mickey gets up and starts going flailing around. So they shoot him down dead, <laughs> and then this is really good with the music. How Sydney just takes the gun, looks down at her, and just shoots her in the head, and goes mm-hmm. just in case. Yeah, and it's like oh, love so that. good. But uh, then they go outside. Dewey's alive. Is real. He's alive. Gail yeah. goes with him. Yeah. yeah. He he gets stabbed in the in old tissues. Luckily, yep. and and I love that he's like bye bye. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he's like with <laughs> with uh, anesthesia or whatever. Yeah. And then Sydney gives Cotton his fifteen minutes of fame. She sends mm-hmm. all the reporters his way, and then she walks off, and the movie ends. Yeah, um, that's pretty much it. I will say I'm very interested in part six because. In part five, we do know that Sam is Billy's daughter, but she never mentions anything about her grandmother. Or if she even knows that her grandmother was the part of the sequel or, yeah. you know, the whole thing of the the whole high. Like, if she even know that was her grandmother. So That's I'm very true. interested in the shrine scene because I know all the ghost face costumes have the names on them. Oh, I gotcha. At the bottom of hmm. each costume. So I wonder if she'll know if that's her grandmother, if it was Billy's mother, or if Gail will tell her in that scene. Um, Another thing is that if you look at that scene, and I wonder if this was purposely done, or if this is... What if the the costumes in that... I, I don't know why I'm going to Scream 6, but the costumes in that scene don't have masks on them. Hmm. So, does it make you think that there's actually nine killers running around? 
Hmm. That would be kind of interesting. One, one, one with each mask from it, all the movies. That could be interesting. That would be re- like it's a cult because I know they they part three was supposed to be a cult thing and they just scratched that. So I wonder I would, if they eventually bring it back. I would love that to be a cult just because since they introduced Reddit that they have a Reddit page. Reddit, um, true crime, like whole mm-hmm. the cult thing. That's all popular right now. And I'm surprised so it's like, that they haven't done like a cult thing. And they could. I mean, I I know it's like a cliche thing where it's like eventually they'll use a cult because it happens yeah. with Michael Myers, like. I do like, I think it fits Ghostface more than anybody. Like yeah, because like, Ghostface is always someone different. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it mm-hmm. makes sense, especially that all these people are getting together and then actually doing the action. So exactly. it could be, it could be that, you know, it could be nine killers. It could just mm-hmm. be one. So it just, it, it really depends. My thing is like, how the fuck did, did he even get all these memorabilias? When I most know, of that's it the is big like question. That's the big question. It's like they're uh, all like all criminal all stuff. Because mm-hmm. I know there's like there's a web page. I don't think it's available anymore, but it's called a uh, murderabilia, and it's like they used to have like old stuff that's confirmed from li- different serial killers, Murders. and then mm-hmm. and then they, they would sell it to you, and it was like it'd be like postcards or like uh, you know like glasses or whatever. So oh, okay. It could be something like that, but or it could be, or like you said, like tr- it makes more sense now with the whole true crime mm-hmm. uh, commentary. So, so it, we'll, it we'll see. I just, I'm just so excited yeah. for Scream Six. You have no idea. Yeah, me I, too. You have no idea. That's next um, month, right? Yeah, yeah. Shit. March 10th. Mm-hmm. Holy fuck, that's crazy. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's Scream Two. Um, what final thoughts or anything? So again, not my favorite. Um, I do, like I said at the beginning, I do think this movie feels too close to the first one with small differences and yeah. the memorable characters are the same people from the first one. Like besides from them being hot, I don't remember. Like Mickey <laughs> did it. Mickey disappears for like most of the movie. That's, that's some people's complaints that he has gone for a lot of the movie. Like, um, he's gone, and then... And I then mean, he's kind of like Stu, like, kind of acting stupid and crazy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like he's crazy. He is the Stu character of this one. And then Mrs. Loomis, like, she is throughout there. She has a reason, which I do like. Um, mm-hmm. But for me, it's like she doesn't really get, like, that much of a... I don't know. I think she should have gotten a way bigger role Yeah. Than just than just whatever she got. And I feel like we should have seen her more doing the being the brains of it because it's like for me, I thought she was the brains of it, but like it doesn't seem so. It seems like she just found Sydney and she's like, okay, we have to find a way to kill her. And then they both kind of worked on it. And Mickey was kind of like, I don't give a fuck. I'll go and kill her right now. I don't have a plan. Well, Mrs. Loomis, she was, I think she was the one doing all the phone calls. Oh, you think so? I think so. And Mickey, because Miss, she, I mean, she's probably like 50. <laughs> like girl there's no way you can take down some most of these people so that's true she was she was i feel like she was definitely using mickey for more muscle and she was yeah. doing most of the phone calls except randy she definitely got randy because he pissed her off with the whole billy comment yeah I, I i will say it might be like a little nod like to mrs Voorhees because um you see her walk out but she's wearing like boot black boots with jeans which cotton uh-huh. is wearing later yeah exactly but it does remind me of how in the first Friday the 13th, like, obviously we see the death, but then you see, like, literally a man walking away, and it's, like, yeah. it's to kind of throw you off. It's always to throw you off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's, like, okay, I kind of get it. Um, mm-hmm. But it's just it's just that. I feel like she, I feel like I, I wanted to see her more involved, I guess. Yeah, like, I get it. In, yeah, but, I mean, again, it's enjoyable. I did enjoy it this time a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um. But again, I would say like this is probably my third. I think I think this is my third movie, or maybe okay. my fourth now. Maybe my fourth because of the fifth one. Because I had I didn't rank the fifth one uh, yeah, at the time. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I really enjoy this one. This one is not my favorite either, but I really do enjoy. It. There's a lot of great scenes, but overall as a movie, I don't really go revisit it as much as the others, and. Uh, Mrs. Loomis's reveal, I think, is very good. Mickey, <laughs> Mickey's pretty much just doing it for power, for fame. Mm-hmm. Um, Sydney, always great. Gail, 
kind of unlikable, but then likable because she's just being a little, she's being a little bitchy in the beginning. I'm, you know, she is. Which, I mean, she, I get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But overall, hot cast. Mm-hmm. Great slasher, as always. So, good movie. Uh, Daddy of the movie for me will have to go to... Oh, this is hard. This is a hard um, one. So many. I have mine. So many. Uh, it's, it's Mickey. Mickey. The psycho, Yeah. In know. that motherfucker in real life, he's still aging fine as one. Like it's uh, crazy. No. He's in the he's in a he was in Netflix a few years back on the Santa Clarita diet with Drew Barrymore, which is oh, really yes. funny because they're both in Scream. Yeah. Um he still he's in so the Mandalorian. Good. Uh because Joe was like, I've seen him before, and I was like, I was looking and I'm like, oh my god, he's in the Mandalorian for like three episodes. Oh, <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and it's and like Jer- he, but, he looks Jer- great. Jerry O'Connell too is so sick. Yeah. Anyways, um. <laughs> um, so out of five stars, what do you give this? So I gave. Well, where's my phone? You know what I forgot? Oh, my phone's watching oh. me right now. <laughs> well, I can I can tell you what you gave it on and and in letterbox. I feel letterbox. like I gave it a three. I think so. I think you did give it a two. I mean, yep, you gave I it a gave three. It a th- so do you three, agree? Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I I mean I just updated it. I had it. I didn't rate. So I I these movies are on my letterbox as I watch them, but they're not rated yet. So during these uh, wa- rewatches now, I'm actually rating them. Yeah. Um. Because they they're just this franchise. It's like there's no bad movie in this franchise for me. No. It's just depends on which ones you enjoy more than you know the other ones. Um. Uh, but I don't have reviews because obviously you have my phone. Yeah. <laughs> or no, um, I mean you know, that's. <laughs> that's okay we, we can skip that size month until we come back yeah I, so, I mean i'll just write them down next time if i get that i don't have problem doing that it's just i forgot this time around yeah it's been okay. yeah it's weird doing this whole thing like yeah, this now for me this was Not also in such an impromptu like episode <laughs> we we're like fuck it let's it, just record it, it on was Sunday. Very, yeah it was very last minute i was like i'm getting the recorder we'll record by next week we gotta do <laughs> i gotta do this like i need yeah. I can't. um but then yeah and then my favorite kill would have to go to um, hmm. Randy. I think the you scene think so, with Randy, Randy is very is very tense. Yeah, yeah that's true. The, if you take the whole scene into consideration, yeah, I, it's I, very I hype so. and everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm trying. And to it's th- sad because you would you mm-hmm. thought he was gonna make it too. I think that's why I I like that scene a lot. My thing is like I wish I would have seen Randy like now, even though I do like his part in the third one. Yeah. Um. I do. I just. I wish like how different would the movies be if he was still alive, like in these ones. Yeah. Because I think he's so critical. I think the only thing with that is that the movies will probably got to kind of like, oh, then we know everyone's safe. Mm, I, I think see. with Kelly Randy in this one, it kind of up the stakes for maybe the next one. That makes sense. I guess mm-hmm. you're right. But mine, I think it's gonna have to be um, uh, Buffy, uh, whatever her name is in the in the I movie. almost said her. Cece. Cece. I almost Cece. Said her. Yeah, Cece. Yeah, Cece. I love that. It just seeing Ghostface running in the background, using Nosferatu as like the score, and just like the similarities. Because even when he's running away, like he's kind of walking like Nosferatu, and it's like yeah. you see the, the silhouette and everything. Mm-hmm. It's just so cool how they kind of implemented everything. So I yeah. I thought that that whole entire scene and her death being tossed and everything. Also, how they end that scene is pretty great. Cause they just start playing like upbeat music while she's laying on the, to the floor party. dead. <laughs> yeah, it's like so crazy. It's so crazy. It's so crazy because she was just in "I Know What You Did Last Summer." I, th- I think the mm-hmm. same year. It's so it's crazy. crazy. She an mm-hmm. icon. She literally is, and she had another great chase scene in that movie. Um, but that's pretty much it, I think. Right? That's everything. Yeah. For, yeah. yeah, that's it. Um, so guys, join us next week for Scream Three. We're gonna continue with our Scream stuff. Which our we Scream have franchise. Thoughts. I have thoughts. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it again. I will say that now yeah. that I'm getting, I know I'm getting myself into that. It's like, so funny. It's so funny. It's like always the third one that I'm like, kind of depends on the movie. Cause like it's same thing with army of darkness. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'm like, eh, it's okay. <laughs> oh, but yeah, we'll do that. And then I hope that this recording went well. Yeah. Uh, my recorder is still going. So let's hope that it, you know, yeah, let's go <laughs> yeah. you're a professional podcaster now i know i feel so professional <laughs> with my own recording and everything um but yeah uh y'all have a great night and yeah remember. stay spooky and stay sexy see you in your dreams horror daddies bye guys